Shabbat shalom to all of you. We give praise honor to the Most High for his presence on this day and for the powerful worship that has gone forth and for what the Father has done supernaturally in our midst. And we're just so grateful and so honored to be in the family of the Most High to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's what time it is. It's time for everyone to connect uh, to the Holy Spirit. Receive Yeshua and be filled with his spirit and then um, actually develop a relationship with him so that the Holy Spirit can move in and through our lives uh, with power and with might. Uh, it is um, good to see Elder Scott here this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to Yahweh. Amen. 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 The enemy had a plan, but the Father had already taken care of it. In the name of Yeshua, we thank the Father for the fire he's been here this morning, all the way from St. Thomas Virgin Island. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you, our wonderful family, uh, covenant partners from St. Thomas Virgin Islands. And they're just such powerful people. All the way in the Virgin Islands, they stay close, closely connected uh, in the name of Yeshua. Um, so we are going to begin this morning, and, and we are going to um, just actually continue where we were uh, on last, last week. And um, we, we were talking about praying the prayer of faith, pray in the prayer of faith. And then on fourth day, if you did not listen to the fourth day teaching, go back and listen to it. Um, and, and it was, um, I think it's what? Huh? Co covenant, amen. It was covenant, being covenant with the Father. When we know that we are covenant with the Father, we have peace with him when we know that we're in right standing and when we know that we keep uh, his commandments, I don't come what comes, we can have peace because we know that we are covered. We know that we're in the ark of safety. We know that the blood of Yeshua covers us and the Father's word is true. And when we are uh, covenant with him, he definitely honors his covenant. We serve a covenant keeping Yahweh. And when we have that uh, covenant and we know that we are obedient to his commandments, then we can stand in faith, trusting him for the supernatural to do everything, hallelujah, that we can't do for ourselves and uh, in, in helping us to endure and to bear up until that total manifestation of whatever it is that you're waiting for is uh, coming to fruition. So this morning we're going to continue talking about praying the prayer of faith, but we're going to add an addendum to that. We're going to say, um, we're going to talk about desires this morning, about desires. Uh, and um, we, we first began to talk about that on last week, and we, we started with um, uh, Romans, the eighth chapter, uh, verse 26 and 28. And I'm just going to briefly go over that because um, if we are going to pray the prayer of faith, and, we, and it might sound redundant, but this is something that you really must hear and get down into your spirit um, because um, oftentimes we're praying and we're praying and we're praying and we're just spinning our wheels and we're not receiving the, the end result of what we feel is our prayers are going forth to the Father for. So we need to make sure that we're in alignment with the word. Yahweh honors his word. And in Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 26, we're talking about um, the Holy Spirit, how that he is our helper, how he is, has been sent to us to help us, to give us power, endurance, uh, to even help our faith, to walk faith out. He's our, the power source in our life. So let's read verse 26, and we're going to read that real quick because we're going to continue 
there are some other things that I want um, to, to talk to you about this morning. Um, Romans 8, 26 and 28, and this is to amplify it. In the same way, the Spirit comes, talking about the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, comes to us and helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as it should. So we pray, but are we offering the prayer as we should? Are we really praying the desires or the, 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 the delight and the heart of the Father? And, and, and when we really look at this scripture, and this is why we keep going over and over and over it. Because I know people have been praying some prayers for years and years and years and years. And it seems as though there's no end to it. Well, that does not mean that you're not praying the prayer of faith. Uh, we were always taught by our pastors that the Father, he would say, yes, no, or wait. So when we are praying, then the Holy Spirit is really going to give you the unction. And when you know that you're praying the perfect will of the Father, you're going to have peace in that. He's going to give you peace. It's going to just resonate in your spirit, and you just will not allow it to go because the Father himself has placed a seed in you. The Father himself has placed a desire in you, a hope in you, and a purpose in you. And he is not going to allow it to go. He's not going to allow it to just die and not fulfill his purpose that he's placed it in you. But we need the Holy Spirit to keep us in alignment with the will and the purpose of the Father so that when we pray, we know we're not praying our own desires, our own wants, our own needs. And we're going to talk about that a little longer because it's good to make your petitions known before the Father. He wants us to make our petitions known. But then when we really pray, and give our tongues, give ourselves to the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit is going to sift through all of our petitions and really pray what the Father really wants you to pray. See, when you're praying, let me tell you, when you're praying the perfect will of the Father, you don't have to worry about your needs being met. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of what? his righteousness, then all these other things will be what? Added unto you. All of these. So when you're in the will of the Father, the word tells us he knows what we have need of before we what? Even ask. Some things you're asking for you don't need. Some things you're asking for he don't even want you to have. Hallelujah. So our, our pastor used to tell us, the Father's not going to give you anything that's going to cause your attention to be turned away from him. So whatever it is that you're praying for and spending more time praying for that more than you're praying the will of the Father, the perfect will of the Father being perfected in your life, he, he's not interested in that. The Father, his number one concern is kingdom. What is going to bring him glory? That's his number one concern. He really don't care what you want to do with your life. He wants what he's interested in, you doing with your life, what he purposed for you to do with your life. Holly, oh, yes, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh Yahweh is good at changing people's plans. Yes, he is. I had plans on my own. But he said, no, that's not my plan and my purpose for you, you see. So the Holy Spirit is going to keep us in alignment with our purpose, and the plan, the perfect plan of the Father. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He's going to pray what the Father wants him to pray through you. The Holy Spirit is interceding. Who is God? Remember, the Holy Spirit is God. And he is interceding for you, through you, to the Father. So that the perfect will of the Father it's going to be manifested in your life. Now, that's crucial. That is crucial. That's why we keep going over this, over and over and over. Okay. Let me, I, I, I want to get through with this. And the word says, go back to uh, verse 26. But the Spirit himself knows our need. Father knows our need. And at the right time, intercedes on our behalf with signs, 
and groanings too deep for words. For he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is. God is searching your heart and he knows the mind of the spirit. And he's going he's gonna to direct the spirit as to what's in your heart. See, the father's looking in your heart. He's a discerner of the heart. He's going through your heart. And the Holy Spirit is going to pray to the Father what the Father said. This is what I want them to pray. Am I making sense? Okay. That's important. I'm telling you, we're going to show you some things today. Simple things that you may know, but you're not really applying. Or are we really applying them the way that we should apply in them? Because the Father does not ever want us to miss it. He wants us to fulfill his purpose for us. Remember, he's our creator. He's the one that, that, that pre predestined us and formed us. He's the one that knew us before we were even in our mama's womb. And before he placed us in our mother's womb, he placed his purpose, he placed a pattern in us. And we were supposed to follow that pattern. And if we get off that pattern, then the Holy Spirit, he's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. But he's going to wait until we get back in alignment with the pattern that the Father has already predestined. Then the Holy Ghost will start praying through you the perfect will of the Father. I'll show you something. Okay. Verse 28. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, you can have that confidence. The Father is deeply concerned about you. He is not going to give you anything that is not going to be a blessing to you. He is not going to give you anything that's not going to aid you in fulfilling his purpose. He's not going to do it. He's the giver of good and what? Perfect gifts. Good and perfect gift. He has concern for us. Hallelujah. And he says, and he called us all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. So everything in your life is going to eventually begin to work for you, but you're going to gain some experience. You're going to learn what you should do and shouldn't do. You're going to, it's going to show you mistakes that you made, and it's going to be working for your good. You say, I'm not going to do that again. Hallelujah. So even the mistakes, even the bad things that you've done, hallelujah, even the things you don't want to talk about anymore, it's working together for your good so that you don't go back and repeat it over and over again. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, where am I going to go today? Let's go to, um, let's look at petitions. I think we started talking about this on last week. Let's go to 1 John 5 and 5. Hallelujah. Praying with your own understanding, praying your own petitions, uh, you express your own desires and necessities praying your own petitions and you're praying those petitions by faith. When you're speaking, the, when you're praying your own desires and, and presenting your own positions before the Father, yeah, you, you're praying in, by faith because this is what you want to happen for you. But will it happen? No. Not if it's not that time and not if it's not the perfect will of the Father. The perfect will of the Father must be done in our lives, okay? First John 5 and 5, and we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears and listens to us in whatsoever we ask. Now, you just can't take that scripture and run with the bad cell. See, this is how people get messed up. They read one scripture, and they say, well, I can pray whatever I want to. I can pray my own desires. I can pray my own necessities. Because 1 John 5 and 5 says, you know, that whatever I ask, 5 and 15 says, whatever I ask, I know that he hears me. He does hear you, but that don't mean he's going to answer me. The Father hears everything. He just don't answer everything. He hears. 
hears what you're praying. But that does not mean that he's going to answer. And see, this goes against a lot of Christian teaching. That's why people get ahead of God and, and, and the most high try to stop making things happen for themselves. Because they say, well, I prayed for it and I asked the faith and I even spoke the word. So I know that the father heard me. But did he answer it? Because it was not the will of the father. Just hold on to this now. And he says, let's go back. And if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears us, listens to us, and whatever we ask. We also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us, that he has granted to us the request which we have asked of him. He will, if your prayer is will. He won't, if you're not praying his will. All right, let's go on. Put my glasses on so I can see real quick. All right. What is a petition? Let's look at, we're going to start talking about petitions, and then we're going to talk about desires. What is a petition? A petition is a request. It is a thing asked for. A petition is a request. When you make a petition to the Father, you are asking him for something. You are asking him to do something. Whether it's for you, a family member, your ministry, your job, whatever. It's a request. And you're going before him in faith and saying, Father, I'm asking you to do this. I'm making my petition known unto you. Because he does say, make your petitions known unto him. But we're going to look at something. So we have to put our total word together. We have to keep everything in what order? Conceptual, conceptual order. Line upon line. Here, there, little. There, little. Precept by precept. So we have to take the total word and bring it together. This is how we mess up. We take one scripture and we try to build a doctrine on it. We just run with that one scripture but you're taking it out of context, okay? So we understand what a petition is. A petition is a request, a thing asked for. You will find that in G159, G159 in the Strong's. All petitions are not answered. They're refused because not in accordance with the divine will of God. All petitions are not answered. He heard you, but what you're asking for is not the plan of God for you. What you're asking for is not going to perfect you. What you're asking for is not going to empower you to do what the Father has purposely intended for you to do. But he hears everything. Everything he hears. Every word, every thought that we think. He knows our thoughts even before we even think it. So he knows, he sees, and he hears everything. And he hears the petitions. But remember, the Holy Spirit is sifting through them. He's, you know, you go through your files and you throw out old documents or you shred things. That's what the Holy Spirit does. There are some petitions being made before the Father, they shred it. The Holy Spirit just said, delete, shred, throw out, obsolete, incomplete, put on hold, not at this time, not at this time. It's on hold. I heard it. I haven't denied you. It's on hold. Not at this time. Hallelujah. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. See, we have to understand, we can't force the Father to do anything. You, 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 we can't manipulate him. 
You can't control him. I don't care how hard you want it. I don't care how many times you fast. I don't care how hard you pray. I don't care how many tears you shed. If it is not the will of the Father, he is not going to do it. You can do it. You can do it. But he's not in agreement with it. So anything that he's not in agreement with, he don't have anything to do with it. It's on you. Wow. Okay. Let's go. Let's look at um, Psalms 37. That's where we're going to go next. Psalms 37. Hallelujah. Let's go there. Psalms 37. Glory. And this is um, a teaching that, you know, we as Christians, we need to, you know, you plan to pray our faith and you say, well, I asked for this and, and, and the Father did it and so forth. Okay. How did it work out? <laughs> How did it work out? All right, about Psalms 37. Let's look at this. Verse 3, trust, I'm going to read out of Amplified, trust, rely on, and have confidence in the Lord and do good. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do when we are praying, we have to trust. We have to trust the Father to know that he's perfecting all those things that concern us. He's perfecting it. So we must have confidence to know that the Father is going to bless us with whatever it is he desires for us to have at the appointed and appropriate time. Ecclesiastes says there's a season and a time for all things. Amen? Okay. Verse 3 in the Amphite says, dwell in the land. Dwell. Take your abode up in the Father. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High and feed securely on his faithfulness. Meditate on his faithfulness. When you're praying, meditate on the faithfulness of the Father. Father, I'm trusting you. I have confidence in you. I know that you love me. Your thoughts towards me are good and not to bring, not evil, but to bring me to out an expected end. You're faithful, so I'm trusting you to give me and to bless me in the best way that you know is good and best for me. I'm not going to try to work it out myself. I'm not going to try to force fit it myself. I trust you because you're faithful. You know the beginning and the end. You know the end of the situation. So I know that I can trust you. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. Now, that's why a lot of people miss it. That's why they miss it. Well, the Father said he'll give me the desires and the petitions of my heart. He will, if they're his desires. And if your petitions are in alignment with what he wants you to ask him to do for you. He's not just going to give you any desire because that's what you want. We want a lot of crazy stuff. That's not good for us. That's going to hurt you. That's going to bring you pain. That's going to hinder you or even stop you. That's going to cause your faith to dwindle. Father says he's to give up good gifts. And he's not going to do that to you. Delight yourself in, the, in Yahweh. And he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. Commit your way unto him. Verse 5 says, trust in him also. And he will do it. What will he do? 
He will give you the desires that he places in your heart and the, and the petitions that is in alignment with your purpose. Those are the prayers that the Father is going to answer. Those are the prayers that the Father delights in. Okay? Now, I want you to turn to where are we going from here? Um, I want you to turn to, hmm, I have a lot of scriptures here. Hold on just a minute. Okay, turn to Isaiah 55. I mean, 50, yeah, Isaiah 50, 55. Hallelujah. Now, this is sober teaching. But I don't have any time to waste. How about you? I need my prayers to be right on. And I need to make sure that I'm hearing so that the desires that I desire are the Father's desires for me. I have to make sure that the petitions that I'm asking for, that I'm laying before the Father, that these are the petitions that the Father wants me to present to him. That's faith. That's faith. When you speak the faith of God, when you speak what the Father wants you to do and accomplish, and you by faith, hallelujah, release that petition from the Father, your faith touches his faith, and then there's a manifestation. That's what it is. That's what trust and confidence is. It's simply saying, I have faith and I have confidence in the Father. I trust him that when I pray, I'm making my petition known, but it might not be his will for me. But I trust the Holy Spirit to pray what is the perfect will and plan of the Father for me. It sounds redundant, but we're missing it. Haven't we all missed it there? Praying what we want. Praying, wasting time. And we're going to show you some very, very bad results of that. Okay? All right, Isaiah 55 and five, and eight. And this issue says, Isaiah says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. But our thoughts can be, become the thoughts of the Father when we pray, where we allow the Holy Spirit to pray through us and for us. Those are the thoughts of the Father. When the Holy Spirit is praying through you, those are the thoughts of the Father. Going to the Father, not your thoughts. Hallelujah. Those are the thoughts that the Father says. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You may be thinking on this level, but my thoughts for you are greater than that. You may be willing to accept on this level, but what I have for you is greater than that. So allow me to pray what I desire for you. Allow the Holy Spirit to pray. The Holy Spirit is, is kind of leading me in a direction, and, 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 and it's, it just amazes me. The, the Father will, and he told me this years ago, he says, I will give you a desire that's way up on the mountaintop. He says, I'll, I'll show it to you, and i give you the desire. And it's way up on the mountaintop. And in the natural, it seems unapproachable. It seems unattainable to you, and it is. He says, but I show you my faith so that you can begin to pray and see my faith and begin to reach for the faith that I have for you to bring it into manifestation. That's what he does. He don't pray on the level where you are. He don't see you on the level where you are. He don't see you the way that he see you. You see you. The Father sees you greater than you see yourself. So he will show you some things, and you say, wow. You say, yeah, that's how I see you. You see yourself here, but this is where I see you. Yahweh's vision is magnified when it comes to you. 
We don't see what he sees for us. We don't understand and know what he has for us. That's why we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. And then as you begin to pray and pray and pray and give yourself more to the Holy Spirit, he will give you a vision. This is where, just like he did Moses. He took Moses to the mountaintop and he allowed him to see Canaan. He allowed him to see it. But Moses did, listen to me, Moses did not receive what he saw on Mount Moriah because of disobedience. Your disobedience, doing what you want to do, how you want to do it, thinking the way you want to think, hallelujah, Yahweh said, go to the mountaintop. And the only way you're going to get to the mountaintop is through and by obedience. Disobedience will prevent you from reaching and receiving the highest blessing. But we are willing to settle for nothing. Obedience. You have to obey. Sometimes it, 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 obedience will require you to do things that you don't want to do. Hallelujah. That's how Moses missed out. He didn't do what the father told him to do. He allowed his own emotions to prevent him from entering into the promise. Why? Because Moses had become emotionally attached to the people. He began to feel like this is my, this my project. No, it's not. Is Yahweh's project. You can't become so attached to situations. And you keep praying and praying and praying. Is it really God's will for you? I'm going to show you some things. This is a very sensitive thing here. Because we're emotional people. I, I, I know about being emotionally attached. I, I understand it. I understand how that some things you just don't want to let go because you become emotionally attached to it. And you feel as though you've invested too much into it. Well, I put all this work into that. I sacrificed this for this. I went through this for this. But it's not your project. Stop taking on projects that the Father has not given you because the Holy Ghost ain't praying that for you. When the Holy Spirit prays through you the perfect will of the Father, it becomes God's responsibility. You always say, take your kids to the calendar, take Eric to the calendar. Say, Eric, my son, oh, this is your departure date. My oldest son. He said, but I don't want to, I don't want to leave the house, mama, because I, I won't be under your umbrella no more. He knew he wouldn't be under the anointing. Well, you need to get your own umbrella. Hallelujah. What were some things that are decisions I made? Was it painful? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But I had to pray and I said, Father, help me, Holy Ghost, help me to see my children suffer. I couldn't do it without the Holy Ghost. Because it's a painful thing. It's painful to see people that you love. And that you have nothing but the highest hopes and the biggest dreams for them suffer 
but you got to give them to God so they can learn for themselves and have a relationship with the Father for themselves. But it's painful. You, you, it's not your project. It's totally surrender. See, I'm going to say some stuff. Because people, especially women, be in bondage. Yes, Because we're such emotional creatures. And we just get all involved. And, and we struggle as women. We struggle with things, and we struggle, we struggle, and struggle. And I'm going to show you some things in Scripture. Not only women, men do it too. You got to learn how to let some things go. You just got to release it. Release it. Well, I want them to be saved. I do too. But they don't have to be with you to be saved. They don't have to kill you for God to save them. He's our burden bearer. People would kill you. All right. God gives you the desires of your heart, not your heart's desire. Did you get that? Not your heart's desire. When you're connected to God, he gives you his desire. That's what he wants you to pray through, the desires that he places in your heart. Not the desires that you place in your own heart. Been there. Done that. Carrying people. Struggling with people. Praying for people. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Being in the divine will of the Father. Hallelujah. I have a lot of scriptures here. Let me see where we're going to go next. Hallelujah. Um, let's go to Hallelujah. Second Corinthians twelve, eight and nine. Second Corinthians twelve, eight and nine. And we know, no, I'm sorry, but this thing I besought the Lord thr- thrice that it may depart me from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glow in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Twofold. This week I let the Holy Spirit pray. Because he knows the perfect will. Paul is saying there was an infirmity in him. Uh, and and it was still, he was afflicted because of the weight of the gospel, the churches, and so forth. And he prayed for the Father three times to remove it from him. And the Father says, but my grace is sufficient for me. Why? Because that was the perfect will of the Father. That was the perfect will of the Father that he endure what he was enduring for the gospel's sake. It wasn't for his own gratification. It wasn't for his own fulfillment. As a matter of fact, he says, it's much better. He says, I would much rather just die and, and, and not be bothered with it. He says, but it is for your sake that I stay. So he was praying 
against the will of the Father, but the Father said, you're going to endure this because it's my will. Because it, but hold on, I'm going to take you so. Because it's my will. How do you know that it's the will of the Father? When you pray in the Holy Spirit. And this man prayed three times. Yeshua prayed three times that a burden be taken off of him. But we're going to look at something because you have to take the total word. I'm not skipping around. I know where I'm going. You're praying in the Holy Spirit. You're praying against something. The Father said, but my strength is sufficient for you. And then the other times when he's going to say, don't do it. Relationship with the Father. He'll let you know when to give it up. If it's not his will, he'll let you know. He will speak real clear to you and say, let it go. And you won't be bothered by it. You just release it. Because the Father knows when you've had enough. If it's not enough, he'll strengthen you to endure it. If it's enough, he'll say, let it go. Been there. Done that. More than one time. Hallelujah. What's going on? Luke 22 and 42. And this is Yeshua praying. He's saying, Father, if it be, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, what? Not my will, but thine be done. Father, if there's any other way that this can be done, please do it. And he prayed three times. Now, we shouldn't have to keep praying the same prayers over and over and over and over when we have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and you're not getting a clear answer. It's something you're wrestling with something. Yahweh is speaking, but you're wrestling. Your flesh is wrestling against the spirit. There's a war going on in you. You have to surrender. You have to submit your will. Not my will be done. Father, I wish that it could be done this way, but it is not your will. Help me to surrender. Help me to crucify my flesh. Help me to give up whatever it is in me that's wrestling against your perfect will. Whatever it is, help me. Show me clearly. Why am I wrestling against you? Why am I fighting with your will concerning me? Help me to understand. I don't want to endure the pain. I don't want to endure the shame. I don't want to endure it. Neither did Yeshua. But he did it. Why? Because it was the perfect will of the Father. The word of God says in uh, Hebrews, the seventh chapter, twelfth chapter, but despising the shame. It was a shameful thing that Yeshua did. He hung on the tree. The word says, cursed is any man that hangs on a tree. He took all of the curses of mankind upon him. He became a curse on the outside, not the blood. And he hung on the tree. When you see pictures of him there on the cross with this nice white cloth around him, no, he was stripped down naked. They had taken his robe off of him. They had gambled for his clothing. He was naked. And people passing by beholding him. His mother was there. 
Mothers don't want to look on the nakedness of their child. Not if you will. He said, by despising the shame. And I had to look before me and see what I was giving my life for so that my purpose could be complete. His purpose wasn't just for himself, but it was for all of us. When we hold on to our will, it, 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 it causes you to, it holds you back. You're spending too much energy praying for something that's not the will and purpose of God when it should be turned towards what is the will and perfect will of the Father. It's a whole back. It, it draws you back. It keeps you from entering in to that perfect prepared place. Where it says, laying aside every sin and every weight that so what? Easily besets you. Hallelujah. Got to lay it aside. You got to put it off. You have to press toward the mark of the high calling. And you're sure. We don't have a lot of time to do what the Father wants us to do. So we got to stop thinking about, well, I made this decision. Okay, we make this bad decisions all the time. That's what repentance and the blood of Yeshua is for. Ask for forgiveness and his father redeemed the time. Redeemed the time. Pulling and pulling and pulling. Dead weight. Wearing you down, wearing you out. Aging you. Affecting you mentally, affecting you physically, affecting you spiritually. Praying the perfect will of the Father. Is it my will or is it your will, Father, that I am praying? Let's look at 1 Samuel. Glory. Uh, 1 Samuel um, chapter 16. We're going to look at Samuel and Saul. Samuel was the per first prophet. He, he, he organized the school of the prophets in Jerusalem. And Saul was a, um, a man-made king. The, the, the Hebrew says, we want a king. Other nations have kings. We want a king. Just We want to be like them. And so Yahweh gave him Saul. And he told him, he says, look, he's going to be hard on you. He's not going to love you. He's not going to care about you. He may appeal to you in the natural. He may have it all going on because Saul was a good-looking guy. He stood higher than the rest of them. At those big, oh, he put your locks to shame, Leviticus. He had locks. He was fine. You know, we always judge from the outer. And, and, and it's always going to be something that we like. It's going to be something. Nobody else might not see it but you, but it's something you like. That you say, I want that. Isn't that, it, it really, most of the time, what we really, really like ain't good for us. Hallelujah. So you just can't go by the outward. You know, you know what I mean? You, 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 it's character that you need to be looking at. And is this person going to love me? Are they going to stick with me through thick and thin? Are they going to care for me? Are they going to take care of me? 
I'm going to be there with you if I get sick or whatever. You're looking for character. It's not about that, you know, that outward man, that outward woman. Like Sheila King, so he said, oh, that's going to go away. <laughs> Sheila said, y'all know Sheila King? He funny. Sheila King, I'm giving, you a, I'm giving you a play. He's funny. He said, don't go for all that. He said, now, you know, it's all right. He said, cute is all right. He said, now, but you can't be looking for all that cute. He said, oh, you're not going to have all that yourself. You see what I'm saying? So, so yeah. Look for something meaningful. Look, look for something that's going to help you. So, something that's going to help you, propel you, encourage you to fulfill your purpose and call in God. Encourage you. Not be a hindrance. Not, not, not. Now, I see some of you that said, no, you, you just can't go home and get out of that because that's your choice. I, I see him. No. I am not empowering divorce in this ministry. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Just keep praying. Hallelujah. Our pastor used to tell us, okay, now ladies, that man might not be what you want, want him to be, don't, but don't start doing things to make him leave. You do what you're supposed to do. If it's not the will of God, he'll take care of it. He'll deal with it in his own time. But you might have to suffer a while for the decision that you made. <laughs> All right. Where was I? Samuel 16 and 1. Thank you. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long without mourn for Saul? seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. When you mourn for people too long, that's not the will of God. When you keep praying for people, that's not the will of God for you. Yahweh will say, give it up, let them go. You told me, he said, get rid of them. They're a problem, get rid of them. They're a problem, get rid of them. Get rid of them. They're a problem. Well, what will the people say? Who cares? What will the people think? Who cares? Why, but what did you say? It all prove out. People are always going to run their mouth. Why do you care so much about what people say or think about you? You want to be in the perfect will of the Father. You want peace. The people that's running their mouth about what you should and shouldn't do, they don't have peace. <laughs> they don't have no peace. <laughs> and they're trying to instruct you. They don't have no peace. It's hell going on in that house. They're like in the Ark of the Covenant, uh, in, in Noah's Ark. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who cares? You can't handle your own business. You're too people conscious. Hallelujah. Any tongue that rises up against your judgment, you shall condemn it. People that just keep watching your lifestyle and keep seeing you living godly and holy. Well, I don't know who they are. They, they ain't married. Or should you be? Are you okay in yours? I mean, a night so you laying up in the bed of him on one side and you on the other side and you crying. Don't no, no start me to talking up in here. So you let people put weights on you. Mind your own business. How many times have I prayed for you and yours? You didn't pray for me and mine. Okay. 
hypocritical stuff. Yahweh says, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. How can you keep blessing someone that the Father has rejected? How can you? If the Father has rejected someone, how can you speak blessing? That's just like Barak. The king hired him to curse Israel. Curse Israel. He says, how can I curse whom God has blessed? And how can you bless whom God has cursed? But, you know, that's why I just, I'm not religious. I just don't be praying for everybody. But they going through, why, why, why are they, why are they going through that? Why are they suffering that? Is it because of disobedience and the father needs to deal with them? And you're wearing yourself out. God told Samuel, I rejected him. Stop mourning him. Why was the father said, stop it, let him go. Let him go. Next verse. Fill thine horn with oil, Samuel, and go leave this place of mourning. You have another assignment. Samuel, and if you stay in this place, if you keep mourning for someone that I rejected, you are going to miss your next assignment. Go, arise. He says, and I will send thee. This is the word that's coming to you, Samuel. I am sending you to fulfill my purpose. And my, the anointing is upon you to fulfill my purpose. And I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go if Saul, listen to this, if Saul, hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an helper with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And you can go on and on in fear, afraid to get up and do what the Father's commanding you to do out of fear. What will happen to me if I, do, if I obey you? What will happen to me if I obey you? I've heard, I know you told me to go, that I have another assignment, but I'm scared to move from this place because I don't know what will happen to me. Will I be able to survive? Do I have strength enough for the journey? What's going to happen to me? You become too comfortable in the uncomfortable to move out into your purpose. You gotta shake it. Just hear from the Father. That's all I'm going to say about that. Well, it's the first thing you have to do. You have to trust the Father. You have to have confidence in him to know that he's going to support you. And that he's going to care for you. And that no harm is going to come to you. When the Father would tell me to move out on some things that would seem like insurmountable to me, he didn't take me like this. He took me like this. Faith propels you. Straight up. Because the Father has already prepared the way. He just wants you to move in that path. Huh? 
Hallelujah. And then you must do good. What is that do good? Obey. Dwell. Continue to dwell in the presence of the Father. Delight yourself in the Father. Because he knows what's best for you. Desire means a request, a petition, a delight, a high degree of pleasure, enjoyment. When you delight in the Father, there's a joy that you have. There's a peace that you have that surpasses all understanding. It's satisfaction. I'm going to close that today. Praying out of your own lust, out of your own desires. That's not the desire, that's not the purpose of the... I, 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 I honestly believe that the graveyard is full of purposes unfulfilled. People take to their grave a plan of God, inventions, revelation, creative ability, because they wouldn't obey and out of fear. Out of fear. That's something you have to get rid of. As long as you're in fear, your faith is not going to operate. I don't care what the Father is telling you to do. If you're praying in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Spirit. And when you know that you're praying the perfect will of the Father, you have peace. That surpasses all understanding. But if your spirit is troubled, that's not the will of God for you. That's not God's plan and purpose for you. I always knew that. If I try to push past, sometimes while my spirit is troubled, when I say yes, it's just... And then things just began to happen. You move, began to move in the favor of the Father. All kind of doors just began to be open for you supernaturally. Why? Because you're walking in that prepared place. And that place is perfect. It's good. It's straight. And people just do all kind of things for you. People you don't even know. You, begin, you gain a greater degree of respect and honor from people. Things, that, visions and dreams that you have in your heart, you just can't seem to get a breakthrough in anything. Nothing is breaking. It's like you're hitting up against a stone wall. Are you praying the perfect will of the Father? I truly believe that too many people of, of God are suffering because they're praying their desires, their own heart desires, and not the perfect will of the Father. The disciples asked Yeshua, how should we pray? He said, this is how. Say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. I've always taught you that when you don't know exactly what to pray, say, Father, thy will be done. If it be thy will, let it be done. Unless you hear a clear rain of word, say, Father, if it be thy will. Stop holding on to fantasies. We create fantasies in our life. We want a life of utopia. We want everything just to be grand. We want everything to be beautiful. We want everything to be perfect. Ain't nothing all perfect in this earth. You're going to have some struggles. You're going to have some tests. You're going to have some trials. But know why? Our pastor, our pastor always taught us two things he taught us. He said, you're going to dance in the spirit for one or two reasons. You're going to dance in the spirit because you're going through something, or you're going to dance because you're coming out. 
That's what they tell us in Church of God in Christ. You, you, you say, you, you're getting ready to go. You say, oh, what am I getting ready to go through? You dance and before you go through the test of the trial because you know the Father's going to bring you out. And you dance when he brings you out. Then they say, know why you're going through a test. Know why you're suffering. Now, listen, a, a tribulation. We're going to have a tribulation. But you're not supposed to suffer because of your decisions. You don't suffer because of Yahweh's decisions. You go through tribulations and tests, but you suffer when you make your own decisions. It's a difference. It's a difference. So you can have tribulation and go through it with joy because you know, I'm in the will of the Father. I'm doing what's right. But you suffer because you don't have peace and you know you're doing your own thing. This is some old Church of God and Christ teaching I'm giving y'all today. So you know, they said it's the charismatic churches no more. And that's why people just be praying for cars and houses and husbands. Houses that you can't afford. Cars, they break down. You, you, you can't change, uh, afford to get the oil change. <laughs> yeah. Charge card overloaded. Because you're on a new outfit everywhere you go. That's the kind of faith that's being taught today. But faith is when you pray in the Holy Ghost. And you say, Father, not my will be done. This is, this is what I want, but it might not be what you want. Holy Spirit, pray for me and pray through me. Intercede for me because I, I, I can't intercede for myself. I'm so confused right now, I can't even intercede for myself. I'm so messed up now, I don't even know what's right for me and what's wrong for me and what's good for me. I don't know whether to go to the right door, the left door, or no door. <laughs> so, Holy Spirit, I need you to intercede for me. Because I don't know what's up, I don't know what's down, I don't know what's around the corner. But you know all things. So, intercede for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. My flesh wants this. I'm not tempted by the Father. I'm tempted by my own lust and enticed. This is a critical place and a critical point in our lives. That's why I kept telling you, develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You must have him. And once you get in that place and you know that you're praying the will of the Father, stay the course. Stay the course. If you know you're praying the will of the Father, stay the course. Stay the course. If you're not, Father, help me to hear clearly what your perfect will is concerning me. When I like different, I like a lot of more scriptures I want to share with you, but this is what the Holy Spirit wanted me to share with you. Get in the spirit. Pastor Didi uh, taught a powerful lesson a few weeks ago. Walk in the spirit. We got to walk in the spirit. Dwell. That's what that place dwell is. Stay in. Get in the spirit and stay in the spirit. In the name of Yeshua. The Father has some great things in store for you. He has some great things in store for your house or your home, your finances. He has some great things, positive things in store for you. But you've got to get in the will of the Father. you got to stop doing things your own way and expecting them to wake out, work out the way that you want them to. If it's your idea, I taught a message years ago. Every good idea is not a God idea. Just because it's an idea and it seems good, it doesn't mean it's of God. Amen? So I pray for you today that you will allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you and allow him to just sift through those prayers and those petitions that we've just been laying up and laying up and laying up. And the Father, yes, he does hear, but is he answering? And if they are Father, and say, Father, it's just a yes, no, a wait. And when you have that peace, when you ask, is it a no, you have peace? And it's no. If you say yes, you have peace, we say yes. Amen.
He will, he will let you know because he does not want our prayers to be in vain. He does not want us to be as Pharisees praying those repetitious prayers repeating the same prayers over and over and over again, but they are not the prayer that the Father wants you to pray. Get in the Spirit. Stay in the Spirit. That is so important. In the name of Yeshua. And you will have joy. And that if it's a weight, you'll have joy. And you'll have peace. And it will not hinder you from doing what the Father has called you to do and be. In the name of Yeshua. Stand on your feet and give Yahweh praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.